I don't normally do this, but this is an unusual video for me. I wasn't sure whether I was going to post it or not when I got to the halfway point. In this video, I use materials that I've never used before. I've never, never worked with them, I've never done the techniques, and I've never done the tools. So, you've got to expect that this is not a perfect video. What you're doing is you're sharing a journey of adventure with me. I think we come out the other end all right, but treat me kindly. I'll now hand you over to the man who normally does it. Welcome back to my workshop. Now the other day I was thinking about what to make next. Recently I seem to have completed all manner of projects, some quite unusual ones really, but I suppose that's the advantage of lockdown, I've got plenty of time. So the other day I was looking at my Instagram page and there's a couple of craftsmen I follow in the, sort of the New England area of America. One of the things they all seem to have, which I rather like the look of, is a, sort of a, a swinging garden bench. And I must admit, I rather like that idea. So that's what we do. In this video, we're going to make a swinging garden bench, but it's not going to be a sort of a standard swinging garden bench. I've got a little twist up my sleeve, something that makes it a little bit unusual. So without any further ado, let's get on with it. We've got a bench to make. Now, as luck would have it, in my job, I use an awful lot of ash. So I've milled myself these two bits of ash. Lovely bit of wood, nice straight grain, certainly on one of them. The other one's a little bit wavy, but uh, it'll polish up beautifully, which that's what we want. So I've milled it down, put it through the planer, and I'm gonna use that to make the base of the frame. I'm only gonna actually make the sort of the seat part. The sides and the back, that's the clever bit. You'll have to wait for that one. While you weren't watching, I managed a bit of extra progress. Let me explain what I've done. First of all, you see, I've routed out on four sides. I've then cut these three pieces here, and I've cut mortise and tenon joints on every joint. If you don't know how to do mortise and tenon joints, go and have a look at some of my earlier videos. I've covered it so many times, um, I'd just be boring you if I did it now. Now this is going to be the base of our swinging seat, our swinging bench. And obviously I've got these slats here that then go across the top here in intervals. And we'll put them to place and we'll cut them to size and they'll fit just nicely on there. And once this is all glued up together, this is going to be the basis of our seat. Now if you remember I mentioned earlier on about I was going to do something different on this one. And this is one of those sort of middle of the night brainwaves. Um, in my mind, it's going to work, but until I actually do it, I've no idea whether it will or not. I've never seen one. I searched the internet. I couldn't see one anything like it. So let's pretend it's unique. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff. Willow. I bought myself five kilograms of willow. I've no idea whether this is going to work or not. But the plan is that I can weave around three sides, the sides and the back of a seat. So it ends up looking a bit like a basket. It'll have that sort of similar appearance. I think that makes it look quite attractive. The thing we need to bear in mind is a basket, when it's a circle, is quite strong. Although it's made up of something which is actually very weak. But by weaving it all together, you end up with a structure which is strong. This has a couple of weaknesses, because it isn't a complete basket. It's a rectangle, not a circle. And it's sort of quite a long, unsupported back, for which you are going to be leaning up against. So I need to build some structure, or some strength, into the back here. The first thing we need to do is to drill a series of holes all the way down here, which effectively becomes the bottom of our basket. This becomes the base of the basket. Do you remember when you were back in school and they would, you made sort of cane baskets using a sort of a plywood base? Well, this is the equivalent of that. I mentioned earlier on that I wanted to do something to put some strength into this back here. So what I've done is I've dug around in my shed and I've got some hazel sticks that I was saving to make some walking sticks with but uh, 
obviously I'm not going to be making some walking sticks. And I've used a stroke pointer and put an 18 mil, what's a consistent 18 mil hole. And I'm going to drill this hole here, put a bit of glue in there, and then with three of these, one, two, three, by doing it that way I get some strength into the back of it. But I also sort of keep that sort of rustic look. I don't want it to look too rustic. You know, this is quite a classy bit of furniture. Now I want to go back at a slight angle. So I've got my bevel here. <laughs> well, when that's done properly with a bit of glue in it, uh, that'll be rather smart. So I'll just go along and do the other two. It's a silly thing really, but these sticks, these, these hazel sticks, uh, these are ones that I cut from my garden a while back. Uh, and I've had them and I've been drying them for a couple of years. But I get a certain pleasure in knowing that I grew my own timber. It's, it's not really a lot of timber, but that's not the point. The point is, I grew it, I contributed to it, and it turns it into my seat. It makes it very personal. And more importantly, it should put a little bit of strength beyond what I could normally expect from a willow seat. But knowing it's there makes me feel good. So that's all that matters really, isn't it? This is only for me. Now what I'm wanting to do is to weave the sides and the back. And I've never done this before. I mean, I've made baskets before. I've never tried weaving a chair back. Well, I think it's going to work. And if it doesn't, we've had a lot of fun along the way. What I'm going to do is first of all put these stakes in and I want them to stay there so I'm going to glue each one in place using willow is not like using a normal piece of wood because the first problem you, you spot is it's not a consistent size Or shape. <laughs> there comes a point where you can put it off no longer. I've been thinking about this one for a long time. So eventually you just got to start. Um, so I'm not intending to give you a weaving video. I don't know enough about it to do that. I shall keep you in touch and see how I get on. What I'm rapidly discovering is this is a long-winded process. It's going to take a while. Well, if you're someone who does proper weaving, by now you must be shouting at the screen. <laughs> And I apologise for it now. But considering it's my first attempt of weaving, or weaving with willow, and I've chosen to do something that's ridiculously large, I don't think it's come out bad. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to pay money for it, but for something in the garden, I think it's quite pleasant. It's environmentally friendly. You know, it's all sustainable. In all... I quite like it. I mean, if you, you put it like that. Ooh. It's not uncomfortable. In fact, if someone came along with a cup of tea now, I think I'd be quite happy. But if I'm honest, if anyone ever comes into my workshop with a cup of tea, I'm quite happy. Oh well. Anyway, the bit I've not been looking forward to, because I can't quite work out how to do it, despite having read all the books, is I now need to do a border. And all the books work on the theory that if you're going to do a border, you're doing a basket, and it's going all the way round. And they don't actually tell you how to start and stop. But I'm sure we can manage it. There might be a bit of trial and error going on here. But the worst that can happen is it looks awful. Well, for all intents and purposes, that's the weaving done. I did say it wasn't a weaving video. 
Well, it's time for another new skill. I've learnt so many on this project. In fact, when I finish this, I'm going to have to go back to being a wheelwright just to sort of see if I can remember how to do it. Now, I gave some thought as to how we're actually going to hang this swinging chair up. There's a couple of ways we can do it. I mean, if you have a look at the ones online, they do it using bits of chain. It's, it's swift, it's easy, it can be done by anybody. It doesn't look very nice, does it? If you go and have a look at the Victorian swing boats, which is another project, I would love to make a swing boat. If anybody wants me to make them a swing boat, just get in touch. Um, they use sort of bits of straight bits of steel up and down, and that would work. But again, it's not very sort of tactile. So what I want to use is I want to use rope, but I don't just want to tie a knot at the end. What I thought I would do is like this: is I would splice it and I would splice it with an eye at the end. Now I've never done this before, um, I've no idea whether what I've done is good or bad, I suppose we'll find out quite quickly, but on the other hand this is rope that's designed to take about a tonne and although I'm heavy I'm not that heavy. There's a number of places on the internet you can go to to go and have a look, um, I'm very grateful to a company called Samson Ropes, I've absolutely no idea anything about them but they publish uh, some very good PDFs on how to do it. I've also discovered there's all different sorts of rope, which I never knew existed before. And this is what they call three strand rope for the simple reason it's made of three strands. So I'm gonna follow the Samson ropes instructions and we'll see whether I can do it. I'll put a bit of tape around there just to stop the whole thing fraying out as it tells me to do. And we take the middle one. I mean, if you're if you're someone who's a time served rigger, if you saw my comments earlier about weavers, you know you've spent years learning how to do this as a craft, and you're going to be superb at it. And I apologise straight away for what I'm doing now because this must be sacrilege to you. But I'm not trying to be. A rigger of tall ships or any other sort of ship come to that. I just want to be a man who hangs up a seat. So the way that this works is you follow what they tell you on the PDF and you just slowly work your way along. Well there you go, that's our end. Would I trust it to hold up the mast on a big ship? Probably not. No, I think you'd need to know what you're doing before you can do In fact, I probably would even trust it to hold up my ass on the little ship. You can see that when you get some weight on that, it pulls itself together. It makes it very hard to pull it apart. So that'll do. I can only get better at it with practice. Now, if we're going to hang this chair up, we need a method of hanging it by. So therefore, we need some eyelets. Now, in blacksmithing terms, this is about as easy as it gets. It doesn't mean I'm very good at it, but uh, it's not difficult blacksmithing. It just takes a bit of practice. So as you can see, that will do the job a treat. Particularly now I've straightened it up. Well, as they say, the end is nigh. So I've taken our eyelets, cut them to a sensible length, tapped an N12 thread on the end. That gives it a pretty solid eye. Nothing's going to move after that. Now, if you want to find out what I'm up to, because not everything I do makes it onto video, but nowhere near. Uh, have a look at my Instagram page. The details are on the bottom of the screen now. And if you'd like to get in, get in touch with me, there's plenty of ways you can do it. All the usual methods. One of the things I have made 
is these little steel rings. It occurs to me, having made these sort of rope strops, that if I just put the strop up and over the tree and come out the other side again, then the chances of it staying there are quite low. The, the, the chair is going to swing backwards and forwards, it's going to be quite dangerous. So we need to be able to stop the chair tipping itself. So by using a ring like this, and then we can hang that bit up onto the tree, but it also means these ropes can't twist backwards and forwards and the chair can't twist backwards and forwards. Had I thought about it really sensibly when I first started, instead of doing one long strap up and down, I probably would have done a strap from here to the ring and here to the ring, and then it, it definitely can't tip. But this way does it just as well, or it'll do for, it'll do for my purposes. So, I'll do the other end, but then it's getting quite exciting. It's time to go and find ourselves a tree. Luckily, I know where there is one. Well, don't you love it when a project comes together? It's taken a while, but I've learnt a few new skills. Who knew I could weave? And I think with a little bit of practice, and I do need a little bit of practice, and I think I might go on a course, but uh, I think I could quite get to like weaving. And then there's this plaiting of the rope, the splicing of the rope. I think it looks quite attractive. I mean, I might need to do something about this bit of tape and replace that with a bit of whipping or something like that, but I'll have to go on a course and find out how to do that as well. So I think there's a danger I'm going to be educated in the not too distant future. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the journey with me. If you did, go and have a look at some of my other videos. You never know, you might enjoy those as well. And if you press the subscribe button, it makes quite a difference to my life. So I'm just going to sit here now for the rest of the afternoon and swing backwards and forwards. I just need a sort of a gimbal on the end here so I can sort of have a cup of tea and it doesn't spill. But maybe that's the next project. You never know. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. <laughs>